Hello from the Crystal Coast. This is Pastor Kevin, and it's Thursday, May the 13th. Today, I want to take a little detour from what uh, I've been doing in uh, some of the Bible reading plans that I'm working through this year, and I want to share a passage with you from Titus chapter 2. <clears throat> Paul is writing to one of these young men that he is actually mentored and and um, placed in a position of leadership in uh, the churches that he has established. And he says this to Titus, But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Likewise, Urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works and in your teaching show integrity, dignity, sound speech that cannot be condemned so that an opponent may be put to shame having nothing evil to say about us. I heard this uh, phrase recently that I thought, would is so helpful for what we are sensing God calling us to here on the Crystal Coast. And here's the statement I heard. Activate all generations to pursue the next generation. Instead of simply thinking that our only focus is on the next generation, I, I hope you understand that it's actually going to require all generations uh, to pursue the next generation, to reach the next generation, to see people come to faith in Jesus, it's going to require every generation. So, <clears throat> if, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I would have loved for somebody to come alongside me, and I had those kinds of individuals who came alongside of me when I was a young man that helped help, uh, shape my life and give me uh, these little nuggets of, of wisdom that helped put me on a, a good path. And I, so uh, let me ask you, if, if, if God brought that next generation person along your path, what would you share with them? How would you encourage them? How would you pursue them for the glory of God? Well, here's a couple of things I think would be helpful to think about in terms of how you can be a benefit and blessing to that next generation. Encourage them to do uh, these things. First, encourage them to Deal with your issues early. Whatever issues that you are struggling with in your life, wouldn't it have been wonderful <laughs> if you would have actually dealt with them early on in your life instead of just kicking them on down the path thinking at some point in the future you'll, you'll get to them? Here's the deal. You are the common denominator to everything that has happened in your life. And dealing with those issues early, uh, boy, that 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 have paid off huge dividends later in life, wouldn't it? Here's the th second thing that I, I think would be helpful as you think about impacting that next generation. Encourage them to get off the fence. Uh, indecision paralyzes uh, people, wherever they are in life. Make the best decisions you can with the information that you have. Get off the fence. <clears throat> here's, here's a third thing that I think will be helpful as you, as you think about uh, impacting that next generation. Encourage them, become a fanatical student of faithfulness. Find the most faithful people you can and then just soak up everything you can from them. Get a hold of every resource you can that deals with the topic of faithfulness and take it all in uh, and, and grow in that one quality in your life. And then here's, here's a final one. 
Live like God loves you, and everything in the Bible is true. Encourage that next generation. How about live your life every day like God really does love you and that everything you read in the Bible is true? Because here's the deal. He does, and it is. So here's the question of the day for you. What one lesson do you wish someone had shared with you when you were in your 20s? What would, the, what would be the one thing? Man, if somebody had had invested in me and poured in me, this is the one thing I wish that they had, had shared with me early, early in my life that would have made a difference. So that's the question of the day. So now let, let me pray for you. Father, we come to you today and we thank you that wherever we are in this life, that that the reason we're still here is because you're not done with us. The reason we're still here is because we have a part to play. We have a task to fulfill, a role uh, to engage in, to be a part of seeing people come to know you, to love you, to serve you, and to enjoy you forever. And so uh, thank you for the opportunities that you're going to place before us. Thank you for, for how you're going to activate each one of us in being a part of the mission that you have given us in this world and in this community to reach out to those who are far away from you, to build up others in their faith, and, and then ultimately to have opportunity to share the good news about Jesus uh, for uh, for their good and for ultimately for your glory. And so thank you that every generation can be activated uh, to be a part of the mission that you have given each one of us in this world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> uh, so <clears throat> before I let you go today, don't please don't forget that we'll be recognizing Brad Smith's 23 faithful years of service to our church family on Sunday, May the 23rd. Let me encourage you to be a part of expressing appreciation to Brad for his service by giving generously, and I know you'll do that, to the love offering that we're receiving even even right now. And uh, we're going to be presenting that to him that Sunday morning in our, in our worship gathering. This coming Sunday, we're going to be hearing from our strategic leadership team about one of the major recommendations coming out of our church consultation process, and, and you're not going to want to miss that. Until, so until we get together uh, this coming Sunday in worship, let me encourage you, whatever generation you find yourself in today, let's come together in the passionate pursuit of the next generation. <clears throat>